Welcome to the web tutorial, NHATS Annual Cognition Measures. First, let's go over what you can expect to learn. We will start with an overview of NHATS Annual Cognition Measures, followed by an explanation of how to construct a measure of probable dementia from NHATS Cognition items. Let's start with NHATS Annual Cognition Measures. The Annual Cognition Measures appear in three sections within the NHATS SP interview the Health Conditions section, or HC, Cognition section, or CG, and Proxy Cognition section, CP. Let's take a look at who completes each of these sections. If the NHATS participant is the respondent to the interview, the HC and CG sections, but not the CP section, are completed. If there is a proxy respondent, the HC and CP sections are completed by the proxy. The NHATS participant is invited to complete the CG section. About half the time, an NHATS respondent is able to complete the CG section. This table provides an overview of items in the HC, CG, and CP sections. If the NHATS participant is the respondent to the interview, the participant reports if they have ever been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease or dementia, several items on self-rated memory, and a series of cognitive assessments. If there is a proxy respondent, the proxy is asked about the older adult's reported diagnosis. The NHATS participant is invited to complete the CG section, including self-rated memory items and a series of cognitive assessments. When a proxy is the respondent to NHATS, rated memory, a dementia screen called the 88, and a set of items on dementia-related behaviors are completed by the proxy in the CP section. Let's take a closer look at each of these items. NHATS participants and proxies are initially asked whether the NHATS participant has ever been told by a doctor that they have dementia or Alzheimer's disease. In follow-up years, the reference period is since the time of the last interview, which in NHATS would be the last year. In the CG section, NHATS participants are asked to rate their memory, in the last month how often memory problems have interfered with daily life, and how their memory has changed compared to a year ago. In the CP section, proxy respondents are asked to rate the NHATS participants' memory. Cognitive assessments include immediate and delayed recall of a 10-word list to measure memory, reporting the day of the week and date and naming the president and vice president to measure orientation, and additionally, a clock drawing test is administered to measure executive function. For the clock drawing test, the NHATS participant is given a blank piece of paper and erasable pen. They are then instructed to draw a clock face with 12 numbers and the hands showing 11, 10. The clocks are scored by coders on a scale from 0, which is not recognizable as a clock, to 5, an accurate depiction of a clock. Proxy respondents are also asked to complete a validated dementia screen developed by Galvin and colleagues called the AD8. The AD8 asks whether there has been a change caused by the respondent's thinking and memory problems in eight areas. For example, whether they had trouble remembering the month or year, repeating questions, stories, or statements, and difficulty remembering appointments. A score of two or more problems is highly predictive of dementia. Finally, proxy respondents are asked to answer a set of questions about dementia-related behaviors of NHATS participants in the last year, including whether the NHATS participant ever got lost in a familiar environment or wandered off and did not return, was the NHATS participant able to be left alone for an hour or so, and finally, did the NHATS participant hear or see things that were not really there. Next, let's turn to the NHATS dementia classification. NHATS has developed a validated algorithm for classifying participants into three groups, those living with probable dementia, possible dementia, and no dementia. We classify the following groups as having probable dementia. First, a doctor told them that they have dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Second, a score of two or higher on the 88. Third, a score at or below 1.5 standard deviations below the mean in two of three assessment domains measuring memory, orientation, and executive function. 
We classify individuals as having possible dementia if they have a score at or below 1.5 standard deviations below the mean in one of three domains, including memory, orientation, and executive function. The NHATS dementia classification aligns well with a consensus panel diagnosis based on several hours of in-home testing. For probable or possible dementia, the NHATS probable or possible dementia classification has 72% sensitivity and 84% specificity. The NHATS probable dementia classification has 66% sensitivity and 87% specificity. For more information on the NHATS dementia classification, including code to create the measures, see NHATS technical paper number 5 available on the NHATS website. This tutorial was produced by Men Yahoo, Sarah Patterson, and Vicki Friedman with funding from the National Institute on Aging. This ends the NHATS Cognitive Capacity Measures web tutorial. Comments and questions may be sent to nhatsdata at westat.com.